Today we are making history because Donut Battery is the world's first solid state battery in production vehicles shipping to customers. Skepticism surrounding Donut Lab's solid state battery is not only undeniable, but also entirely warranted. According to Donut Lab CEO Marco Lettimaki, claims of an energy density of 400 watt hour per kilogram, a full charge in five minutes, 100,000 charge cycles, with a service life of up to 100 years, tolerance to extreme temperatures, and costs lower than lithium ion batteries appear to challenge well established scientific limits in battery research. For anyone knowledgeable about battery technology, such an idealized battery simply cannot exist, let alone be replicated and mass produced, especially given the well known constraints related to cycle stability, weight, and industrial scale manufacturing. Donut Lab is presenting a no compromise, all solid state battery. Not hybrid, not semi-solid, and not solid-state-ish, but all solid-state. Engineered as a complete battery system, pack, electronics, thermal, and safety, and built to scale. And that is not all. Donut Lab also claims that its battery is significantly cheaper than lithium-ion batteries because it does not rely on rare or critical materials. The company even states that this would be the world's first solid-state battery to be mass-produced. It sounds like the perfect battery, doesn't it? However, in our view, completely dismissing this technology at this stage is unnecessary. Instead, it may be more reasonable to approach it with cautious skepticism. After all, if these batteries can indeed be manufactured at scale, we stand to benefit from the research. And if they cannot, the outcome is unlikely to have any serious impact on us. So how exactly could Donut Lab's solid-state battery be mass-produced? And can we truly place our trust in a young and relatively unproven battery brand like Donut Lab? Welcome to Tesla Car World. For more than a decade, solid-state batteries have been positioned as the next big thing in energy storage. Despite massive investments from Toyota, Samsung, Cattle, and other companies, commercial solid-state batteries have consistently failed to achieve mass production. The reasons are well documented. Unstable solid electrolytes, fragile interfaces, dendrite formation under high current densities, and manufacturing processes that are incompatible with existing lithium ion battery production lines. Against this backdrop, Donut Labs claims appear extraordinary, especially coming from a young company with a small team and limited publicly available technical data. Trade offs higher costs, shorter cycle life, slower charging, or increased safety risks. Donut Lab claims to eliminate all of these drawbacks simultaneously, a combination that many experts argue is physically implausible. And even Marco Lettimaki himself has had to acknowledge this. Yet Donut Lab insists that it can achieve an energy density of 400 watt hour per kilogram without making any trade-offs. Even the best lithium ion batteries available today, including those used in premium electric vehicles, typically reach energy densities of only about 175 to 250 watt hour per kilogram. Donut Lab, however, claims to possess a solid state battery with more than double that energy density, a level that virtually no battery technology in the world has been able to achieve. This is the point at which experts begin to say that the claims sound too good to be true, and it is not only experts. We have observed that most people express skepticism toward Donut Lab's solid state battery as well. If you look at the comments under the company's videos on its YouTube channel, the comment sections are filled with viewers who clearly do not believe what the CEO is claiming. Moreover, like any other breakthrough technology, solid-state batteries are not without potential pitfalls. Mass-producing them may be far from as straightforward as it appears. One of the greatest challenges lies in the stability and maintainability of solid-state battery cells when manufactured at scale. To be viable for mass production, batteries must demonstrate a high degree of stability, not only in isolated laboratory tests, but also under real-world conditions, where they are subjected to harsh operating environments such as high temperatures, fluctuating loads, and many other factors. The evidence is telling. At CES, no functional batteries were on display, only empty battery casings. In addition, the claims made by Donut Lab's CEO have been widely criticized as exaggerated. So is this the most overhyped battery scam in history? Or has solid-state battery technology truly become a reality? 
the absence of independently verified charge-discharge curves, third-party lab validation, or working cells on public display at CES has only intensified doubts. High-profile criticism, including a public rejection of the technology by a senior executive at Cattell, further reinforces the perception that something does not add up. While CES did not provide conclusive technical validation, it did provide something equally important. Evidence of deployment intent, integration readiness, and ecosystem alignment. Donut Lab did not present the battery as a distant prototype with a 20 to 30 timeline. Instead, it framed the technology as production ready, already integrated into real products. Most notably, the Verge TS Pro electric motorcycle was announced as the first production vehicle using Donut Lab's solid state battery with deliveries planned for customers rather than labs. This distinction matters. Historically, fraudulent or purely speculative battery technologies remain confined to concept stages. They avoid integration into commercial products because real-world deployment exposes performance gaps immediately. By contrast, Donut Lab has moved its battery into controlled, lower-risk vehicle categories, a strategic decision consistent with early-stage but manufacturable technologies. The strongest argument in favor of Donut Lab's near-term manufacturability lies not in full-size electric cars, but in smaller systems, electric motorcycles, scooters, drones, robotics, wearable devices, and compact mobility platforms. These applications share several critical characteristics including lower absolute energy requirements, reducing thermal and stability risks, smaller cell formats, which are easier to manufacture with tight tolerances, simpler pack architectures, lowering system level complexity and faster iteration cycles, enabling real world testing and refinement. In battery engineering, scaling is not linear. A technology that performs reliably in a 3 to 10 kilowatt hour system may fail catastrophically at 80 to 100 kilowatt hour. Donut Lab's decision to begin with two wheelers and compact platforms aligns with how credible energy technologies historically mature. Even skeptics acknowledge that if the underlying device behaves more like a hybrid electrostatic system or advanced capacitor-based architecture, then claims of ultra-fast charging and extreme cycle life become far more plausible, especially in small-scale deployments. A common misunderstanding in this debate is the definition of mass production. Mass production does not require immediate suitability for every application category. Lithium-ion batteries themselves followed a similar trajectory. First consumer electronics, then power tools, then vehicles, and finally, grid storage. Donut Lab has publicly described a modular manufacturing approach with smaller production facilities rather than centralized gigafactories. While this raises questions about cost efficiency for automotive scale packs, it is well suited for distributed production of smaller battery systems. This model supports early scaling without the immense capital risk associated with full automotive grade battery plants. Importantly, Donut Lab's current partnerships reflect this strategy. Verge motorcycles, compact mobility platforms, and electrified trailer systems represent manageable steps toward validation, not shortcuts around physics. None of this implies that Donut Lab's technology is ready to power millions of passenger cars tomorrow. Large EV applications introduce challenges that remain unproven, such as long-term degradation under high load and fast charging, safety validation under severe crash conditions, cost stability at tens of gigawatt hours per year, and supply chain resilience at automotive volumes. History strongly suggests that even if Donut Lab's battery works as advertised in smaller systems, years of testing, failure analysis, and iterative redesign will be required before widespread automotive adoption is realistic. In this sense, skepticism should not be framed as disbelief, but as demand for proportional evidence. The most convincing interpreting of all available information is neither hype nor hoax, but selective readiness. Donut Lab may have developed a novel solid-state or solid-state adjacent energy storage system that genuinely outperforms lithium-ion in specific metrics and formats. That does not require it to violate known physical laws, only to exploit design spaces that are impractical at large scale, but viable at small and medium scale. By launching at CES, integrating into real products, and targeting compact applications first, Donut Lab is behaving more like a company attempting controlled industrial validation than one selling vaporware. The debate around Donut Lab's battery should move beyond a binary question of real or fake 
the more productive question is where and when this technology can work. Current evidence suggests that mass production for small devices and lightweight vehicles is plausible and may already be underway. At the same time, large-scale electric vehicle deployment remains an open challenge, one that will require years of transparent testing and independent validation. If Donut Lab succeeds, it will not be because it ignored physics, but because it respected scale. And if it fails, it will fail where all ambitious battery technologies fail, in the long, unforgiving process of turning laboratory promise into industrial reality. For now, cautious optimism, grounded in evidence, not belief, remains the most rational position. How can solid-state batteries fix the flaws of today's batteries? One of the most frequently cited criticisms is that Donut Lab failed to display a real battery at CES, instead presenting what appeared to be empty battery shells. At first glance, this seems damning. In an industry where working prototypes are often displayed as proof of legitimacy, the absence of a live charging-discharging demonstration naturally fuels suspicion. However, this observation deserves a more careful interpretation. The physical form of the battery modules shown at CES is, paradoxically, one of the strongest pieces of indirect evidence that Donut Lab is working with a manufacturable system rather than a purely conceptual one. The modules on display were not abstract mock-ups or artistic renderings. They were fully industrialized enclosures with standardized mounting points, integrated thermal pathways, structural casings designed to bear mechanical load, and interfaces clearly intended for vehicle integration. These are not features one designs for a speculative laboratory cell. They are features associated with systems that must survive vibration, shock, moisture, and real-world operational stress. In battery engineering, packaging design typically follows cell architecture, not the other way around. The fact that Donut Lab has progressed to a mechanically coherent, vehicle-ready module strongly suggests that the internal electrochemical system exists in a sufficiently stable form to justify this level of downstream engineering investment. Critics argue that an empty shell proves nothing, yet historically, fraudulent battery projects rarely invest in realistic mechanical integration because doing so exposes them to immediate verification once partners attempt installation. Donut Lab, by contrast, has openly placed these modules into real vehicles, most notably electric motorcycles intended for road use. This creates a verification pathway that would be irrational if no functional energy storage system existed. Another central controversy concerns the fundamental nature of the technology. Donut Lab has been criticized for ambiguity over whether its product is a true solid-state battery or some form of supercapacitor or hybrid device. This ambiguity has been interpreted as deliberate obfuscation. However, it can also be interpreted as a reflection of a deeper issue. The industry's rigid definitions may no longer fully capture emerging hybrid architectures. From a performance perspective, the reported characteristics, extremely fast charging, very high cycle life and thermal resilience are difficult to reconcile with conventional lithium metal solid state batteries. Yet they are not inconsistent with systems that combine electrochemical storage with significant electrostatic behavior. Importantly, such systems are not inherently inferior. They simply occupy a different region of the energy power spectrum. If Donut Lab's technology does incorporate capacitor-like mechanisms, this would explain several contested claims simultaneously. Why fast charging is achievable without catastrophic degradation, why cycle life is unusually high, and why performance remains stable across wide temperature ranges. It would also explain why scaling to very large energy capacities presents unresolved challenges. None of this implies deception. It implies that the technology may not fit neatly into legacy categories. The debate over energy density, 400 watt-hour per kilogram versus the 350 watt-hour per kilogram figure shown at CES, has been used to argue that Donut Lab's claims are inconsistent. While the discrepancy is real, it is not unusual in early-stage commercialization. Energy density figures can vary depending on whether they refer to cell level, module level, or system level measurements. They also change as designs are iterated for safety, durability, or manufacturability. More importantly, Energy density alone does not determine commercial viability in smaller vehicles. In motorcycles and compact mobility platforms, volumetric and gravimetric constraints are significantly more forgiving than in passenger cars. A battery that is not optimal for automotive use 
can still represent a major performance leap in lighter systems. The Verge motorcycle integration illustrates this point clearly. Even a modest improvement in usable energy density, combined with faster charging and lower degradation, can dramatically alter the user experience in two-wheeled vehicles. One of the most persistent doubts is whether Donut Lab's battery can be produced at scale given its claimed cycle life and material composition. Critics argue that achieving 100,000 cycles while maintaining high energy density violates known degradation mechanisms. This criticism assumes, however, that the battery operates under the same electrochemical stresses as conventional lithium ion cells. If the internal architecture reduces lithium plating, minimizes volumetric expansion, and distributes current more uniformly, as hybrid or solid state adjacent systems often do, then extreme cycle life becomes less implausible, particularly in applications with lower depth of discharge requirements. In small vehicles and portable devices, batteries rarely experience the aggressive full-range cycling typical of automotive testing protocols. From a manufacturing standpoint, Donut Lab's choice to emphasize smaller production facilities rather than massive gigafactories is also revealing. This approach is poorly suited for supplying global automotive demand, but highly appropriate for producing thousands or tens of thousands of standardized modules for niche mobility markets. In other words, the production strategy matches the application strategy. Another controversial point is Donut Lab's decision to partner with relatively small manufacturers rather than global automakers. Critics interpret this as a lack of credibility. Yet from a technological maturation perspective, this choice is rational. Large automotive partners impose stringent validation, liability, and regulatory requirements that can freeze innovation for years. Smaller partners allow real-world testing without existential risk. The Verge Motorcycle Partnership, in particular, provides a controlled environment where performance claims can be observed by customers, regulators, and competitors alike. If the battery fails to deliver, the consequences are immediate and public. This level of exposure is inconsistent with intentional fraud. The absence of independent third-party validation remains a legitimate concern. Statements from major industry players rejecting Donut Lab's claims should not be dismissed lightly. However, it is also worth noting that disruptive technologies often face resistance not only because they are flawed, but because they challenge established development trajectories and investment roadmaps. What ultimately matters is not public debate, but empirical performance. As Donut Lab's batteries accumulate real-world operational hours in motorcycles and other devices, the data will become impossible to ignore. This is precisely why early deployment in visible consumer products is more meaningful than laboratory demonstrations alone. So if the device delivers ultra-fast charging and extreme cycle life, but struggles to convincingly prove ultra-high energy density, should it still be considered a breakthrough, or does energy density remain the non-negotiable benchmark? Please share your opinion in the comments section below this video. Thanks for watching our video. Subscribe now so you don't miss the next breaking Tesla update. It's coming in just two days. If you want to explore more exciting information about Tesla EV or Tesla bot, don't forget to hit the like button and share this video. Also, make sure to turn on notifications so you never miss our latest videos. We appreciate your support and look forward to seeing you in the next video. Goodbye.